gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and thank you very much for checking out today's video. It's much appreciated. And I've been wanting to do this video for a while, guys. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the three uh, marquee, top name, three of the best bass fishermen that ever picked up a rod that have sort of got screwed a little bit by the entire fishing industry simply because of where they were when they did so good. So we're going to have a little conversation on that. I think you guys might find it interesting and love to hear your guys' opinion on that too. So real quick guys, for my, uh, just a quick reminder about our Father's Day solar bat sale on my RB2 Signature Series glasses. Um, it's only a couple more days left in the sale if you're interested. If you buy a pair between now and Father's Day, you can get them at 30% off. Um, so I'll put the solar bat link in the description. And man, I, these are the high con yellows. These are my favorite lens color here. I think you guys will really like the optical clarity of it. So link in the description here. Okay guys, I'm gonna talk about three hanglers here and um, I'm gonna explain to them why they have just not been treated fairly in relationship to their performance. And that's David Dudley, Andy Morgan, and Scott Martin. <clears throat> Now, if you guys have followed FLW, you're very much aware of these three guys. These guys have had phenomenal careers, absolutely phenomenal careers with FLW. All of them, it's like, uh, you know, Angler of the Year winners, the, you know, Forcewood Cup winners, multiple tournament winners, Angler of the Year. I mean, they've, they've done it all, guys. They were, back when FLW was at the heyday, these three were in the they were in the top 10 all the time <clears throat> it was just phenomenal the consistency they had but the problem is is they never got the recognition through flw as they would have like if they were in bass simply because um to to put it no other to put it to put it no other way the basic business model for bassmaster was to promote the anglers and try to create stars and FLW did not have that business model. They basically wanted to cater to their sponsors and they didn't promote their stars. And therefore, they, the anglers, like I'm talking about here, Dudley Morgan and Scott Martin, they never got credit for the, for the credit they deserve. I mean, they did, they got credit within FLW, but basically the fishing industry and the public and the, and the, and the sponsorship end of it, they never did get their due, their just due with that. And, if, the, if these guys, if these three anglers would have had the same career on the Bassmaster Top 150 or Elite Series, they would be household names and you'd have, they'd all be in the Hall of Fame and everything. None of these guys are in the Hall of Fame. I, I think, well, Andy Morgan, I know is over 50. I, I don't know why he's not in the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame. He's like, he's got better criteria than 95% of the guys that are in there. And uh, I'm not sure, Dudley's gotta be close to 50. Uh, Scott Martin is probably pushing 50, they all are. But if you look through the, statistics, the stats, guys, it, they'll blow you away. Dudley, all-time winning money winner with FLW, like I said, did not get the credit they deserve. There's, a, there's guys that Bassmaster are not taking anything away from some of the guys, but they have, they have had a lucrative, career and the public knows who they are and they didn't have half the credentials as these three got three guys did and here's the thing about it and i can speak to this guys because i fish both i fished the flw tour for um almost 20 years i fished bassmaster top 100 you know elite 50 series uh top 150s for over 20 years i fished around these dudes all the time and i can tell you right now the level of competition was stiffer. It was close. I'm not saying there was a big gap, but the level of competition was stiffer on the FLW Tour during those years where these guys excelled back in the late 90s to the mid 2000s. It was it was more competitive than the Bassmaster Top 150 Series or the Elite Series. I I'll, I will stand by that behind anybody because I was there. I know I know the guys and. Um, I look back at the careers that they've had and they just don't get the notoriety. I, I think it's just sort of a tragedy within our sport that the media in a large percentage did not give these guys the credit they deserve because here's what would happen. You'd have the Bassmasters Classic and there would be, in, in all the bass fishing genre and all the bass fishing media, there'd be this big lead up to the Bassmasters Classic. And then for the Forestwood Cup, there would be like a day before the cup, uh, FLW Cup starts tomorrow. Even though the Cup paid more money than the Classic, it was more difficult to qualify for it. 
and the guys that won it, like David Dudley, when he won it on the James River, just didn't get the the uh, criteria or didn't get the notoriety that they had. But anyway, this is just another one of those injustices in the sport of fishing that has come a lot of it. A lot of it has to do with just business models and politics around it and uh, different agendas tournament organizations have. But in other words, I just want to say, I'm not saying that these guys are down and out. These guys are very, all three of them are very successful even to this day. And all of them have made a very good living in the sport. But for the amount of success that they have had, which is literally borders on the phenomenal they have not got their due credit they have not within the public and um i just the the whole thing that i want in professional fishing and fishing is i want a level playing field where everybody's treated the same and where there's not some type of a two-tier justice system that we have in here and what it, what had happened that that was created between those two organizations through the business model a little bit and um they just like I said, didn't didn't stand out like they should have. So, anyway, let me know what you guys think. I know, I know a lot of you guys have followed the sport for a long time and you're familiar with it. I'd be curious to hear curious to hear your guys' feedback. Um, like I said, there's been a lot of people that Bassmaster has elevated and promoted, and that has gotten a lot more exposure than these three anglers, and without half the credentials they have, and that's just not right. So, anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll talk later.